And now uh, I'm going to go to Professor Yuichi. Uh, are you as uh, cautious and skeptical uh, in Japan? And where do you see this uh, trajectory going from, the, from Japan's perspective? Thank you very much, Chairperson. And also, I'd like to thank the organizer for uh, including me, or I should say, including Japan in this uh, session. Because by sitting here, I think that I can give you an impression that the Japan is not marginalized or isolated in the process of the negotiation on North Korean issues. Uh, yes, uh, I'm skeptical, but we can have some hope. But basically, I'm skeptical for some reasons. And before that, i like to clarify uh, some points regarding uh, of Japanese position uh, uh, to the North Korean issues. Uh, some news media are saying that Japan is marginalized or isolated in the process of uh, uh, North Korean issues. I think this is partly right, because Japan didn't join in the Korean War. And uh, armistice agreement of... Uh, uh, July 27th of uh, 1953 was signed by American forces and Chinese People's Volunteers forces and North Korean forces. Japan didn't join in that process. That's why these three powers are principal uh, parties to talk on peace talks. I mean, the United States, North Korea, and China. And the armistice agreement stipulated to start the peace talk among the four countries, United States, China, North Korea, and South Korea. So it would be natural that Japan actually doesn't join in the process of the peace negotiation. But on the other hand, I also like to say that among the all G7 summit meeting leaders, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is the most experienced leader. Uh, he uh, visited Pyongyang in September 2002, together with Prime Minister uh, Junichiro Koizumi at that time, and so that's why he joined in the process of the drafting Pyongyang uh, uh, declaration between Japan and uh, North Korea. So he knows the details about the negotiation. Also at the time when he was a prime minister in 2006 and 2007, the six party talks which included Japan actually uh, published several important statements and joint declarations. And uh, Prime Minister Abe also knows very well about the details of that negotiation and uh, agreement. That's why he knows the detail and he was betrayed twice. North Korean government betrayed Pyongyang declaration and North Korean government also uh, betrayed uh, as well joint statement of the six party talk which uh, Japanese government actually joined in. And that's why it would be natural for Japanese government to, to be skeptical to North Korean attitudes. So what the Prime Minister Abe or Japanese government is doing is not to isolate or contain North Korea, but to try to persuade North Koreans to come back to the original position of agreement, which North Korean government itself actually agreed and accepted. So that's why it would be uh, 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 possible to see that the Japanese position is tough. Japanese position is tough because international community actually has been retreating from the position which international community agreed in 2005, 2006, and 2008 in United Nations and also in Six Party Talk. But besides, let me end to add one point. Japan can play also a very significant role in the process of the reconstruction of North Korea. Once <coughs> rapprochement and peace talk uh, can be advanced because uh, in the Pyongyang Declaration, Japanese government agreed that once the treaty was concreted, Japan uh, will put, would provide uh, economic assistance to uh, North Korea as a kind of uh, war reparation. I mean, in 1965, at the time of the uh, 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 basic treaty between Japan and South Korea, Japan started economic assistance to South Korea. That's why Japan was willing to provide equal amount of economic assistance to North Korea. It means that 
North Korea can get huge amount of economic assistance from Japan, and this would be essential foundation for, I think, North Korea, reconstruction of North Korean economy. That's why at some point, I think that North Korea would be willing to invite Japan to join in some talk on the reconstruction of the country. Of, but if North Korea doesn't like to invite Japan uh, uh, for having economic assistance from Japan, maybe Japan can be happy because we don't have to pay it. But I think that because it is written in the Pyongyang Declaration, that's why it is quite probable that Japan will join in the process of economic construction of North Korea. But I like to end that, but I'm quite skeptical because uh, uh, I well, like uh, Ambassador uh, Im already mentioned because the international community, particularly President Trump, has been retreating from the previous agreements because President Trump has no interest in details of the negotiation and it will kill uh, the stability in the region and uh, destabilize the region. And uh, we will see perhaps a structural change in international politics, which uh, President Trump has no intention to do that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Yuichi. So we now move to Professor Telaraya. And uh, you recently wrote, Professor, you, you asked yourself and the audience a question, who needs to make peace with whom in this, in this situation? And are we really talking about the new peace regime as a conclusion of this process or, or a reconfiguration of a previous arrangement?